In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your servant, St. John the Twenty-Third. Through his intention, grant us the courage to put out into the deep, bringing your light into the world. By his holy example, ignite our faith, hope, and love in love for you, love for our neighbor, that we will love each other and strive for peace along the way. Welcome whoever comes close to us and set aside whatever difficulty it might bring. May we place our hope in the fullness of life that far exceeds the dimensions of this earthly existence and share in your divine life for all of eternity through Christ our Lord. In the, name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Those who have not noticed, uh, this is the first time we're filming one of these. Uh, Carl's here to make sure he knows where to edit out all the booze <laughs> and all the things being thrown. But thank you for coming. It, is, it has been a quick start to the year. Uh, looking at the calendar yesterday, we are literally three weeks away from ending the first quarter. So we're almost a quarter of the way through, and it feels like we're just getting the kids back into a routine. But we're almost there. And part of that is, is because of all the, all the work you guys have done. I thank all the veteran families. So many new families have come to me and said how welcome they felt in just the first couple of weeks. And that's a big testament to our community and how much we outreach to new families and our new students as well. And we're going to have something like this for the new families in the coming weeks to see how they're kind of been broken in and how things are going for them. But uh, thank you to those families that were able to come today uh, and those families that are watching today. Um, we have been blessed this year with probably our largest group of volunteers ever signing up for, for different events that we have, whether it's HSA events or school events or Faith in Action events. And that's a real testament to our stewardship on this campus and what we try to instill in the kids as well. Um, we've had a, a good jump start, believe it or not, and I, I notice people shudder at this idea, but we've had a good jump start to next August already. Bonnie's already doing tours. We're already getting in applications, which is, it's a good sign. I mean, it's, it shows that we're heading in the right direction, that the word is out there about that, about us, and that's all because of you and all the work you guys do to spread that word about how good the things are at the school, and we appreciate that. Um, summer has brought quite a few changes to the campus for those of you that have been on campus and seen it especially. Uh, a new phone and bell system to secure the safety of our school. We, we, Tom and I were getting tired of going in and resetting the bells every three days because they were off and people would say, hey, I was on time yesterday at the same time. My iPhone said it and now I'm not, so we're better. Um, the bell system is far more reliable. The speaker system, when we have lockdowns or, or fire drills, far more reliable than it's ever been before. We no longer have to go to the rotary phone to reset it. Um, so things are good. Uh, we're, we're still making some changes with that, but it, it's definitely better. Some much needed maintenance over the summer. Uh, for those that noticed, for the first time in 16 years, we had the school painted. Uh, the kids appreciate not having paint chips fall on top of them, and we appreciate that now it looks a little bit more like a unified campus with the gym and the, and the parish side of the paint there building as well, so it's, it's definitely coming around. First time we've replaced the carpets in quite a long time throughout the upstairs of the two-story building in the new library area. Gives the kids a cleaner, a little bit more manageable surface to sit on when they're doing library time. So we, I know the library has appreciated that. Uh, the name changes happened over the summer and all the fun that came with that. The signage, the uh, multiple construction lessons I learned about sign permits and what can and can't happen, but we're getting there slowly but surely. Paperwork starting to come in, new letterhead and things like that. It's been a process, including ordering new athletic uniforms for fifth to eighth. So many of you that have kids in those grades have seen those already. It was a big chunk for us, but it was, uh, it was well worth it. Our kids deserved it. Uh, for those that, that are pretty savvy with technology, you've noticed we launched a new website. It is far more manageable for us as a school. We no longer need to outsource somebody managing that. It saves us some money. We can do it all in-house, and it's a, it's a little bit easier to read, a little bit easier for you guys to navigate through. In the coming days, there'll be some changes even to that. And I'll, I'll highlight those as we get a little further into this. One of the big changes, as many of you have seen, is we now allow online ordering of uniforms and spirit wear. So we're trying to work around your schedule, not you work around our spirit store schedule. You can order it in the middle of the night, which is usually when I do my best thinking, when the kids have gone to bed. <laughs> and so um, that's all available for you now, and we'll make some changes even to that as we go forward. We expanded, especially for those of you that have smaller kids, you know, we expanded our one-to-one -one program uh, down to third grade now. 
it's actually all the way to kinder, but third grade, eighth grade, we are full one-to-one -one iPads. They are using them in the classroom. Third to fifth have a slightly different model than, than six to eight do. Uh, K to two now have a classroom set. Every single classroom has a center set. And you know, if, you're, if you've had little kids, they work a lot in centers, groups of five or six. Every room has six iPads in it for them to use them in the centers, and they're using them every day. Not as technology time, but more as we're going to learn math through the iPad or social studies through the iPad. So we're making some changes in there, and it's, it's certainly kept us busy. Um, in fact, October 10th, the upcoming date is our dia you, you all know it as the day off of school. We know it as is our diocese and in-service at Xavier, where every single teacher in the diocese comes together. And we usually get workshops to help us with new ideas on campus and, and new technologies and new things that we want that the diocese would like to see us use. We have been truly honored this year. Um, St. John's and Brophy are pretty much the only two schools presenting to every single school in the diocese, high school and elementary schools on technology. The focus this year has been on technology. Some schools are trying to do what we're doing. Uh, some have had some success, some are struggling, and we've continued to move ahead, and those schools want to know how we're doing it. So our teachers from, uh, there's some teachers from second grade all the way up are presenting. Uh, as well as Brophy will be presenting for their one-to-one -one technology they have. And we're running the entire workshop for the diocese, which is a testament to, to the work we're doing, but more importantly, a, a real flattery from the diocese that they trust us with that. Um, our kids have been asked for the second time in a row uh, to be the main kids for the diocesan, uh, their only fundraiser of the year, the Night of Hope, where they uh, try to get money for, for needy schools. Our kids have been asked to come and highlight elementary schools. We're the ones running the technology. We're the ones running the sign-in. We're the ones that the faces will see when they first come in there. Uh, we've also been asked to compete, which was, did not happen last year. We're, because of us, they're allowing elementary schools to compete in that. And, and I'm sorry to those parents who have kids running around with cameras. We've seen it for the last two weeks trying to win this contest. But they're competing to see if they can get the best video to show why, why they love being in Catholic schools. And the kids have really taken ownership of that. And it's, it's fascinating to watch them. Uh, our Spirit of Service group, we formed it two years ago. For those of you that have been involved in it, you know how great it is. It gives you an opportunity as a family to go with your kids on, at night, on the weekends. I see Michelle Bucci here, and she's been instrumental to that. Um, Karen Lord, Tom Quinn, they've done a great job. We've had, uh, Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, at least five events that I've seen either happen already or about to happen in the next month or so. We've got them posted on our website. There's more coming. Um, it, it's exactly what we're about. It's exactly what we're hoping to instill in the kids. It's instilled in the kids so much that in the last week and a half, I've had two separate kids that had nothing to do with Spirit of Service, although they had been on those Spirit of Service trips in the past, come to me and say, hey, I'm doing a drive on my own. I'm doing stuff on the outside because of what I got from that. In fact, they've even asked the school to be part of that, and we've, we've joined in their help because it's, it's what Pope Francis has asked us to do. We've heard so much about it in the last year, and we're trying to do that, and that's what we want to do is still in the kids, and it's working. So we're going to continue to, to promote that and do what we can, get those opportunities out there for you as a family. I know I hear so much from families of, I want to do something, but I don't even know where to start. Well, the website has some stuff. It has four or five things posted right now, and there's more coming. And they fill up fast, so we'll put them up there as soon as we get them. Uh, last year, we were honored, and he's here today, and I'll embarrass him because that's what I do best around here is embarrass people. Dr. Ochsner won uh, National Catholic Educators Association Teacher of the Year, and we were... We were, uh, we were truly honored to fly out with him to Pittsburgh to receive that award, and uh, it, it, it's a, it was a real beacon of hope for what we're doing. Uh, as well as last year, we were finalists for the Arizona Cape for iPad for the iPad program for Program of the Year in the state, in Arizona, uh, state of Arizona. This year, we received already, and we're not even. I mean, breaking a sweat into this year, uh, Alda McFarland, our middle school English teacher, received Arizona English Teacher of the Year for all of the English teachers, public and private, and Catholic in the entire state. She won that award about two weeks ago, and we really couldn't be happier. I mean, it's another it's another feather in our cap. You can clap for it. It's, uh, it's a huge accolade for the school, and it just shows how, how, how cutting edge some of these teachers are and what they're doing with your kids. Um, this week, we, and for those of you that have sixth graders, you probably heard it already because it's, it's gone through the campus like wildfire. And it'll start uh, today with seventh grade, coming up next week with eighth grade, and then we're going to push down to third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, we are launching in our, our library an ebooks program. 
where uh, we're going to start making electronic books available to our kids, uh, whether they're on your home device or they're on their own. If they're six to eight, they obviously have their own. And they can start taking out novels through that. We hear from parents all the time, and I know as a parent myself, you want to get your kid reading and you want to get them excited about reading. And oftentimes our kids always do that, well, I'd rather read it on the iPad or I'd rather read it on my Kindle or whatever. Now we're making that option available, and they can take it home with them. It's on their iPad. It'll be there for 14 days or however long the takeout period is, and then it just populates back to us. It's just like the library system they have at the, at the public level. But the difference is our teachers are able to pick books, and then your kids can go in there. As we've seen in sixth grade, we, we introduced it to them over the last two days, and I think of the we don't have many, about 125 books. I think almost 100 of them are out, checked out already, which really says a lot to how much these kids want to read and want to be engaged. They can search it by subject. They can search it by their reading level. You can search it by their reading level, by their Lexile scores, by what you're seeing on their ITBS results. It's all in there. You can search by however your grade level and pick books that are appropriate for them, and then they can take it right out on their iPad or your iPad if you download the app, and then 14 days later, it goes back. And it's a, it's a, it's a new program we're launching. We're hoping to, to build the program up like I said, 120 and change books. We want to get it up there. We're not abandoning paper. Uh, to, to give it to you in, in other terms, in statistical terms, about 10% of our purchases this past summer were electronic books. The other 90 were still traditional paper and or online resources for our kids to use for researching. Uh, we're still not abandoning that model. It'll always be there, especially for our little ones. But um, we have to we have to address our kids' needs. We have to address. We want them reading. I mean, even as parents, we want them reading. So, how do we do that? We engage them where they where they like to be on the iPads, on electronics, on on devices. So we're doing that. We're working towards that. Uh, Andrew's sitting in the front row. Andrew Helford has been on our board, leading our CEA committee, and I. I we got some great news. He doesn't even notice. Uh, a couple days ago, from Catholic Education Arizona, and I know. Um, you guys probably get sick of hearing me talk about Catholic Education Arizona and, and what it means. And in fact, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deviate for a minute to tell you a story uh, because it will, it will tie in. Uh, and those of you that have uh, or have had a seven-year-old boy, like I do, uh, will appreciate this. Uh, the other night, my little one, Connor, uh, my wife called him to dinner. I said, come on, Connor, you need to come in and sit down. Took a couple calls. He finally got in the room. Should I need you to sit down? He said, no. Tonight I'm going to stand for dinner. Um, it didn't go so well with my Irish wife, who said, you need to sit down at the dinner table. And he said, nope, I'm going to stand for dinner tonight. And she said, all right, I'm going to count to three. And I actually saw my daughter move the seat back a little bit from the table, knowing what was going to ensue if three got reached. So he got the one and he got the two. And when she had the TH out of the three, he sat down with the angriest face I've seen him make in a long time. And he looked at her as straight face as could be and said, I might be sitting on the outside, but I am standing on the inside. <laughs> it's hard not to laugh when you see that happen at the dinner table. I'm going to come back to CEA, and I'll tell you how this ties in. Because I know when I talk to people about CEA, they tell me, oh yeah, I got it, don't worry, I I'm on it. I have a list of who gives. I mean, they, they give it to us and who, who redirects their tax money to CEA. I know it sounds like a donation. It is not a donation. You're redirecting. You're telling the state government, I'd like you to, instead of spending my money on X, Y, and Z that you feel is important, I feel it's important that it goes to Catholic schools and Catholic education. In fact, I feel it's important that it goes to St. John's Catholic School, not just any Catholic school. It allows you to tell the state to do that. And I know the legal minds in the room are all having the same thing that went through my head of, that can't possibly be legal. But it is. Last year, it went to the United States Supreme Court that said it is 100% legal and the state can do it however they like. They've actually upped the amount. It's over $2,000 a married couple. Now let me give you some perspective on that. It's about $21-ish per married couple. If you gave and redirected your money to St. John's at $2,100 and you got a grandparent, an aunt, a neighbor, or anybody else to give as well, and everybody did that, it's $4,200 per kid. Tuition is only $4,900. We'd essentially reach a free school. Well, we took one of the first steps, and I promised Father Pete four years ago when I came on that I would make that a priority of getting towards that point where we'd reach a tuition-free school. CEA, Catholic Education Arizona, is the best way to get there. We made a good step. Andrew and his committee did huge work last year. 
I'll put it in perspective. When I came on board, the school was making roughly $100,000 worth of redirected tax money. We're hitting near the $300,000 mark for this past year. So they've tripled that number on top of the fact that we received a corporate tax donation the other day of $60,000 for next year. So he's starting, his committee is starting at $60,000 before they've done any of the great work they've done up to this point. Put it in some more perspective of how much you can make a difference in your lives. We tell everybody all the time, apply for CEA. Even if you don't think you will need it, apply for CEA. Because if we have extra money, it will go to the people that applied and didn't qualify. So here's how it works. People apply. You're put into two categories. You're either qualified, there was a need there. And believe me, we have a good chunk. We have almost 90 kids on the campus whose families qualify for a need that they can't afford to send their kid here, and CEA says, yes, we need to help them out. We had 120, 115, I think, families apply for CEA. We had enough money this year that CEA in the past has said, well, we can only have enough to fund people to maybe 15% of tuition, 20% of tuition. We funded every single person that had any need whatsoever to 80% and funded people that had no qualified need another 20%. And we still have $70,000 left over into next year's money. If more people would apply, we could use that for more people. Andrew and his group are doing incredible work to get those numbers up. But it's a two-pronged thing. And I know when you tell me, I'm going to redirect my tax money to you, you're sitting on the outside, but standing on the inside because you're not doing it. <laughs> I need you to do it. I need everybody to do it. And get a neighbor, get a friend, get a coworker, get a, a grandparent, get an aunt and uncle to do it. We could get there. We are, we are making the first steps towards being the only, and, I, and this is out there, uh, Flagstaff, Prescott, there's a couple preschools already are at this point. They're tuition free. Now their pastors have said, hey, I, don't, I, I want the parents to have some say in this where they're not getting a free education and they take it for granted, so that we want them giving somewhere. But they're effectively free. They're there. We would be the first and only elementary school in the diocese in Midtown, in, in Central Phoenix, to get there. And we're, I can tell you right now, because we're the only one that's met all of its need and had leftover, we're on our way there. But it, it, it needs some help. It really needs some help from all of you and, and getting the word out there about that. Um, Andrew does a great job with getting coffee and donuts in your hands and getting your, your kids sugared up before they go to class. But we, we, need, we need some help, too. We need you to be sitting and, and, and paying attention to it and, and helping us out as best we can. Um, I, I know it's a big step for us. I know it's a big, it's a, it's, it's a big ask on my part uh, and, a, and a big loan of trust that you're going to give to me to, to do it. But it will help us. I'm seeing, we're seeing the effects already. And those people that knew they didn't qualify because they got a letter that they didn't qualify are actually now going to get a letter in the next week that says, you're getting money anyway because we had leftover money that we had to spend. So apply, give. We really need everybody's help with this. Um, there's more great changes coming. You know, it, it doesn't seem to stop. There's always something going on. Around December-ish, we're hoping we're going to be breaking ground in that gravel area for the new church which will be huge for our kids. And we're excited about it. You've seen the pictures. You've probably seen the pictures at nauseum now for the last couple of years. It, it's going to happen now. It's official. I mean, it's, it's gone to finance. The architects have drawn up the plans. It's gone to permit. It lo it's looking like December. So it's, it's big news, news for us. We're going to work on some more safety things. Those of you that have little ones on the back of the two-story building, you've seen the nightmare that is that drop-down step. We're going to try to get that fixed up in the next couple of days with some, with some hardscaping. Um, Next summer, we're looking at redoing the gym floor, get rid of the bubbles, get a proper floor in there. I know that that's a long time in the, wait, in the waiting for some of the older families that saw that gym go down, so that's going to happen next summer. You know, all this great work doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, work of things like our HSA, committees like them, the, the school board, and of course, all of you are instrumental to that. Uh, none of this, none of these things we do to benefit our kids could happen. The help we get on annual appeal, the help we get on our annual dinner auction. That's what makes these extra programs happen. Our operating budget does not cover all of our expenses. We don't even meet our expenses for what we charge. We're the low, in the bottom quarter of tuitions in the diocese. Comparable schools are nearing the $7,000 mark, 6,500, 6,800. We're keeping it 49 because we want to keep it where we can ask you for help in other places. And we're trying to be good stewards of that money to make it happen. 
get the things our kids need. But when that call comes for Andrew O'Neill, that's our bread and butter. That's how we operate. We, we trust in that, that that will be our, our way to get that money and a way to make those programs happen, like expanding the iPad program or increasing the safety on campus. And that's the way we do it. Um, we, we've been busy. I mean, next, next Tuesday, this year is going to bring a lot of change with it, too. Next Tuesday uh, is the first of our, it's our pre-visit. You heard me squawk about this for the last two years. Next Tuesday, it's here. Our pre-visit for our accreditation happens um, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, and then the actual visit itself will happen on November 12th, 13th, and 14th. You'll hear your kids coming home with it. If you haven't already read some details about it in the Friday email, it's, it's been in there thanks to the teacher Bill again in that committee on school improvement team. Um, accreditation is important. It gives an outside group an opportunity to come in and say whether we're lying to you or we're actually educating your kids in the way we said we were. They, they look at our report, they interview our kids, they interview our parents, they interview our staff and say, yeah, they are educating the kids here. They're doing a good job. So it's an outside third party, nothing to do with us group. In fact, the chair is flying in from San Francisco to see what we're doing. They share that news at the end of it with, with the community of, hey, we're seeing in these great areas and these areas maybe something to work on, which is what we need. We need somebody from the outside to come in and say, hey, you guys might think it's great, but we're seeing it a different way and we need that feedback. This is super important for us. The kids will be fine. They won't notice that there's like some strange person in the back watching their class because they're going to see every class. We're going to have eight, people, seven people on this campus, and they'll see every class, every teacher. They'll watch things for three days, like columns. But at the end of it, we'll get some good feedback that we really, we really need, and it will help. It'll be a good experience for us to grow up. Well, I promise you, people, I will keep this short so uh, you can get to work and you can have a good rest of your lives. Uh, I fell miserably at that, as usual, but I get excited. I get excited about the successes we've had, being happy the opportunity to share those with you, and I appreciate all the support you guys show us every day. I know Tom, this is going on, I'll speak for him. So thank you for all the help, thank you for all the growth we've had in the last couple of years. We couldn't have done any of it without you. Uh, and thank you for coming to this. And most importantly, uh, I always thank everybody, and I say it again, thank you for sharing your most precious gift in the world with us, your kids. We'll close with prayer, and then I'll stick around, and we can, uh, we have some more coffee we can chat. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We praise you, O Lord, and we bless you for your good and gracious, and your goodness and your graciousness, for giving us St. John the 23rd to be our brother and our path to holiness, and your amazing example for hope and light for the world. Let his courage embolden us, his missionary zeal for the gospel inspire us, and his contagious joy be ours as we continue his work of preaching the good news to a world that needs it most. For your divine mercy and love. St. John the 23rd. Great for us. Thank you for coming out. God bless you.